Welcome to the first chapter of the course Microbiome and Health. Before we can dive into this topic, we have to define the term microbiome, of course. So what is the microbiome? Interestingly, there is no commonly agreed answer to that question among the scientific community. The words micro and biome are of ancient Greek origin. Micro means small, while the term biome is composed of the Greek words bios, which is life, and modified by the ending ohm. Now there is also the term microbiota, which is sometimes used analogously to microbiome, even in scientific literature. The word microbiota is a combination of again micro, so small, with the term biota, which means the living organisms of an ecosystem for a particular area, including bacteria, archaea, fungi, algae and protists. Why are there even two different terms when there is only confusion about the meaning? Recently, a panel of international experts discussed these questions in frame of the European-funded microbiome support project. The meeting brought together about 40 leaders from diverse microbiome areas, while more than 100 experts from all over the world took part in an online survey accompanying the workshop. They clearly separated the terms microbiome and microbiota and provided a comprehensive discussion considering the composition of the microbiota. Microbial communities have commonly been defined as the collection of microorganisms living together. More specifically, microbial communities are defined as multi-species assemblages in which microorganisms interact with each other in a contagious environment. So now we take up the term microbial community and further enhance it by answering the following questions. What about viruses? Are they part of the microbial community and the microbiota? What about prions, phages or viroids? The simple answer is no, because microbiota are, is usually defined as the assemblage of living microorganisms present in a defined environment. As phages, viruses, prions and viroids are usually not considered as living microorganisms, they do not belong to the microbiota. Now a more specific question. What about free extracellular DNA? After all, DNA derived from dead cells, the so-called relic DNA, can comprise up to 40% of the sequenced DNA in soil, for example. Like before with the viruses, the simple answer is no again. Of course, free DNA is not part of the microbiota and it is not considered as living organisms. So now we have dealt with the term microbiota, but what about the microbiome? Are phages, viruses, plasmids, prions, viroids and free DNA part of the microbiome? The term microbiome, as it was originally postulated already in 1988, includes not only the community of the microorganisms, the microbiota, but also their theater of activity. The latter involves the whole spectrum of molecules produced by the microorganisms, including their structural elements like nucleic acids, proteins, lipids, polysaccharides, metabolites and also molecules produced by the coexisting hosts. Furthermore, the term considers the surrounding environmental conditions as well. Therefore, all mobile genetic elements such as phages, viruses and relic and extracellular DNA should be included in the term microbiome, but are not part of the microbiota. So clearing that up, we can define the terms microbiome and microbiota. The microbiome is defined as a characteristic microbial community occupying a reasonable well-defined habitat which has distinct physiochemical properties. The microbiome not only refers to the microorganisms involved, but also encompass their theater of activity, which results in the formation of a specific ecological niche. The microbiome, which forms a dynamic and interactive microecosystem prone to change in time and scale, is integrated in macroecosystems, including eukaryotic hosts, and here it is crucial for functioning and health. The microbiota consists of the assembly of microorganisms including prokaryotes like bacteria and archaea and eukaryotes like protozoa, fungi and algae. So for those of you paying careful attention until now might have noticed that the definition of the microbiome included eukaryotic hosts and the importance of the microbiome for their functioning and health. The meaning of that statement will be explained in the next chapter in detail. Thank you for your attention.